This is chapter 3 selections, programming exercise 8, sort 3 integers. So we're going to write a program that prompts the user to enter 3 integers and display the integers in increasing order. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, first to do that, let's try to visualize some scenarios that's going to happen and how are we going to uh, take these scenarios and display it correctly. So, from what I could visualize, if we were to give, uh, if we were to be given three numbers, there are a possible of six scenarios that could happen. And in this case, let's visualize it as A, B, C, where A is a number for each, uh, uh, A, B, and C is a number for each case. And let's start with the top one right here, where let's say A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. And if we were to sort it, the result will be A, B, C. Simple as that, right? But what if, let's take a look at this right here. If A was 3, B was 2, C was 1. Well, simple. Since, since C is the smallest, A is the largest, it will be displayed as C, B, A right and of course for all the possible scenarios it will always work like this right where the smallest number will appear first the largest number will appear last in this case if a was one b was three and c was two it'll be displayed as a c b in increasing order so these are all the possible scenarios for this case all right so right now, after we have the scenarios visualized, we understand how it's going to be displayed if this occurs, if this number was the largest and this number was the smallest, which order will it go? We have that in our mind, where we just have to now figure out how to program it, how to uh, display it onto the console. And to do that, well, let's take a look at a scenario and let's try to uh, kind of code it out, right? So, if we were to give a scenario where A is 2, B is 1, C is 3, we of course expect the result to be displayed as B, A, C, or 1, 2, and 3. In this case, what we could do is use if and if else statement to tackle this issue. So, Let's say, uh, let's write out all these possible scenarios in an if-else statement. That way we'll be able to display. And to do this, let's tackle this scenario right here. So let's say if B is less than A, is that true? Well, B is 1 and A is 2. 1 is less than 2, therefore yes, B is less than A. All right, if B is less than A and A is less than C, well, A is 2 and C is 3. Yes, that's true. A is less than uh, C. Therefore, now we know that we could display uh, the value as B, A, C. All right? But what if there's another scenario? If a, uh, B is less than A, all right? If B is less than A, but C is actually less than A. Instead of A being less than C, we put another check right here. If C was actually less than A, in this case, if C was two and A was three, then we'll have to do another check. We know that in this scenario, B is less than A, A is less than C, therefore B is also less than C. But in this case, if B is less than A and C is also less than A, we don't know if B is greater than C or C is greater than B, right? then we'll have to do two checks. In this case, we'll do another check and say, hey, if B is less than C, then we'll display it as B, C, A. Otherwise, C is actually less than B, and we'll display it as C, B, A. All right? So if you were to take a look at this scenario and compare it to all of this, these, all these scenarios could pop up and uh, give you a little bit of a challenge when you want to sort it correctly. But as long as you're able to visualize all this um, through here, 
or to other means that uh, it's more helpful for you, you'll be able to easily tackle this exercise and this example. All right, so let's try to get all of that into code. And let's write that down. Right, and let's have our int a comma b comma c. Now, if you were watching a previous video, you notice that I capitalize all of this, and you wonder, hey, didn't you tell me that uh, common or common coding conventions when you capitalize? a variable, you're saying that these are actually final values. Well, I'll say yes, you're correct and good for remembering that. But in this case, let's let's just put that um, convention aside and let's just, uh, just take it in as an okay practice for this video. And the reason for that is just so you could get a better visualization of what I've written in my uh, slides right here. Uh, it will be easier to compare if they share uh, similarities and uh, easier to understand. But in other cases, do understand that yes, if you capitalize these variables um, in common co uh, program conventions, generally means that they are of final data type. Final data type means that you can't change the value after you have set it. So if you set the value, uh, as a final, then it can't be changed. All right, so that's what that means. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is, of course, be able to ask the user to uh, set a value. Right. So enter the first value, and that first value will go into a. And let's say input dot next int, and then we will have for second and third value. Okay. All right. Of course, all of that's going to be stored in here, and let's get a little nice visual. We'll have a equals a, and uh, b equals b. And in case you're wondering what this slash n means. It means to create a new line. And I want to create a new line right before I display the B equals equals. So that's what that means. So let's run this and let's get a better visual on how all of this looks like. So let's say I do something like this. So now it'll be first value is two. So now A equals two, second value is three, B equals three, and C equals one. So A, B, and C. All right, now time to sort it. Uh, and before I sort, let me write this sort result just to visualize it better. All right, now let's say, let's try to tackle one of these scenarios. So one of these scenarios from what I've written, we say that uh, if A is the smallest, C is the largest, it should display as A, B, C. So we'll tackle that scenario first. If A is less than B and B is less than C. All right. If A is less than B, and then we do another check inside here, B is less than C, we could easily tell that This, if this will be the correct value display. We could tell that because if A is less than B, B is less than C, therefore A is also less than C, A is the smallest, B is the second, and C is the largest. In this case, if we were to run it and try to uh, point that this value is correct, A, uh, one, two, three. Um, let me see. 
sort result. Uh, there we go. Oops. All right, just to get a better visual. All right, there we go. A's one, B's two, C three. If we were to sort it and check it like this, uh, it will display smalls first, largest last. Perfect. We have make sure we have ensure that the scenario is correct. Else, now we have a little bit of a confusion. What if C is actually less than B? Well, if C is less than B, uh, did I do, 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 do else? If C is less than B, well, we know that A is less than B, and then we also have C less than B. If A and C is less than B, well, which one is actually smaller? A is smaller or C is smaller? So now we do one, we do another check. If a is actually less than C, then we could simply say uh, saying uh, A is the smallest. So right here we're saying A is the smallest, so display A first. C is the second smallest because C is less than B but greater than A, so C is the second smallest. And now we know that B is actually the largest number. And if that was the case, then we'll display that. Else, the only other possible scenario is, well, if uh, A is less than B, but C is less than B, we don't know which one of these is small, A or C, but we did a check here. But if this does not come out to be true, then it's actually the reversed. C is actually less than A. C less than A, but B is still the largest. All right, so right now we managed to tackle three possible scenarios with just this right here. All right, so we were to run that. Uh, let's do, let's try to have this pop out. So we will have C being the smallest and A uh, B being the largest. So let's try to do something like two, three, one. Two, three, one, bam, where uh, C is the smallest, so display C first, which is one. Uh, A is the second smallest, display that next, and B is the largest, all right? With that, we tackle one, two, three possible scenarios. All right, now, Let's see where this ends right here. Else if, else if, let's try to do another scenario where let's say B, all right, so let's, why do we start with B? Well, we already tackle scenario A, one and two. These are all the possible scenarios for A. Um, so now we don't have to do scenario A, we could do scenario B. Scenario B, but let's make sure we don't do a repeat. Do we have else if, if the scenario if it, uh, B is less than A? So let me do a quick check. Uh, we have B less than C, which is covered right here. But we don't have B less than A. All right, so inside the B less than A scenario, what could we do? Well, we could say, hey, A is less than C, then we know for sure that since B is less than A and A is less than C, we know that B is also smaller than C. And because of that, excuse me, we know that B is the smallest, A is the second smallest, and C is the largest. And let me just double check that I didn't repeat myself where this will now be B, A, C, and we don't have any B, A, C scenario. Awesome. Now, uh, if we got that covered, we want to reverse this actually. So now we do another check. Else if, what if C is actually less than A? All right. So if B is less than A, 
and then a is less than c is false, well, what do we reverse it? c is less than a. Now we come into confusion like the previous time, right? We know that we now know that a is largest. If we ever to jump into this statement, we know that b is less than a, c is less than a, a is therefore the largest value, but we don't know if b is the smallest value or c is the smallest value. So we have to do another check in here where we say, hey, is b less than c? Well, if b is less than c, therefore, um, b is less than c, so uh, b is actually the smallest, and then c, and then a. Now, after all of that, we cover five scenarios so far. One, two, three, four, and five. So that will only leave one last possible scenario. And because of that, one last possible scenario is the only scenario that could possibly exist. We don't even have to do a check, right? We don't even have to do a check. And we know for sure that C is the smallest and then B is the next smallest and A is the largest. So let's see if we could uh, run that scenario where C is the smallest, right? So therefore, it will be three, two, one, and sort result. And actually, something went wrong with my code and it's actually not showing. So let me try to find out what's going on. If, if, there we go, I see why. Okay. Else, I placed it in the wrong area. But let me make sure that that is true. Yes. Uh, didn't see that bracket there. Placed in the wrong area. And because of that, no result showed. But there we go. Placed it in the right bracket. Uh, in the right area. And we got our result. So <laughs> that is a error made on my end. And... Um, definitely should always review your code or view my own code or in this case our code right to make sure we are writing this correctly if for some reason it doesn't show up, even though we know our logic is correct we just gotta take a look back step back and try to take a look at the bigger picture all right and here we go we managed to uh, store or sort all the possible six scenarios here where a is the smallest and then it could be b c or a is the smallest and c and b or b is the smallest and a c or b c a and then lastly uh, c a b and c b a all right so hopefully all of this makes sense uh, if not let me know or uh, we could take a look further at this, these scenarios and try to visualize and try to understand why we have six scenarios, uh, why we sort like this, and the order we sort it, and how do we come across into solving this would be a great way to try to, to understanding um, sorting and tackling this exercise.